Hello, I'm Daniel from Pwn CNC, and we're going to be installing our dust boot and the bracketing system onto a Shipoko HDZ carriage. Let's get started. Here you are looking over my shoulder. We're going to look at all of the parts that come in your package. You should have a couple of track brackets, a left and a right support arm, two of the T-nut plates with the embedded screws or nuts inside, two thumb screws, a left and a right uh, ear that will attach to the HDZ as well as our brackets, four short M5 screws, or long M5 screws, and four short M5 screws. We'll use the uh, M short ones to attach the wings, we'll use the long ones to attach the brackets, and let's uh, jump over and get a close-up of the carriage. I'm going to start with an M4 um, hex uh, driver here, and we're going to remove the limit switch here on the right side. Keep it assembled, we will be uh, reusing it. Uh, we're just going to be repositioning it. We're going to take over the two screw holes right there for use with one of our ears. We're going to take our right ear and two of the short um, M5 screws as well as an M, uh, let's see, a three millimeter um, hex driver, which is what our, our screws use. So I'm going to get it started a little right here into the ear. The ear itself will sit with the letter correct or with the R letter correctly facing and the two short screws will go right here on the on the thin part of the ear. So if I can get my hands positioned right, I'm going to set this right in here. And as we drive it in, it should catch the threads of where our limit switch was installed. There it goes. Give that a nice tight turn. We'll do the same to the bottom. Oop. Looks like there was a little bit of a snap whenever I popped that in. That was just the uh, plastic snapping against the uh, edge of the HDZ here. Nothing to worry about. Oh, catch. Oh, let me loosen up the other one. There we go. Now we can switch it around. There it goes. Now it caught. Now we'll go ahead and tighten it down on both of them. There. So it's nice and good in position. We're going to switch back to our four millimeter hex driver. Make sure our spacers are properly installed and everything. Now, there are a couple of, you've got three screws here, or three holes here, and then three holes down here. We're going to take the bottom hole right in the middle. That's where our limit switch is going to be installed. So I'm going to take the driver, line it up with those holes, and twist it in. It may take a little effort um, just to get it started because it is plastic. Um, the reason I went with plastic instead of a, uh, a heat insert or something like that is the plastic will give a nice hold to the screw. So once you've actually gotten the screw threaded in there, and that's the hard part is you're threading the plastic. But once it's installed, it's not going anywhere. It'll be nice and strong and hold that screw so it won't back off at all. Now, there, it's nice and in position. And of course I've um, got it all in there. I wiggle it, make sure it doesn't, doesn't move and we're good on that side. Let's switch over to this side. Just like before, just like with the other one, we're going to take our, in this case, we're going to take our left ear and we're going to take two of the short M5 screws. And again, we're going to put it into the thin part, thread it 
into the thin part. And you may need to use a driver for this. These are obviously uh, wings that I've already had installed, so I, haven't ha I don't have to re-thread the plastic. Um, it's already been threaded, but you may need to take your driver, your M3 driver, and um, actually drive it into it. Maybe put this in a vise, um, kind of hold it tight so you can thread it in there. But that's once that hard part's over with, um, it's good to go. So just like with the right side, the left side has a couple of ears, uh, or holes where we're going to mount our ears. Those holes um, are undesignated as far as they're not they're not used um, by carbide, but they were kind enough to add them in there for uh, um, third party third parties to utilize. It looks like. But. Let's see, get that screwed in there. Okay, we got them both in there, nice and tight. So I'm gonna switch over to an over the shoulder view and we're going to install the track brackets. All right, here we are over the shoulder. We've got our ear, this is the left ear. We've got a left track bracket and we've got holes right down the side. That is going to be on the outside of the carriage and we've got two long M5 screws. Now these do go in from the front and it does not matter which holes you put them into. Um, well, sort of. You've got two holes up here at the top and then two corresponding holes just below it on the third row of holes. So these two holes here are for accessories, whatever you or I think up. These holes down the side are also for accessories. Um, in some of my carriages, I do utilize the bottom hole but the rest of them are for you to use, um, either mounting a spray tube or whatever. <laughs> so again, it, you can use any one of these four. I would recommend using at least one on the left side and one on the right side, um, just so that um, it can have a it, it can prevent any sort of twisting or something like that. So we're going to take our M3 hex driver, and again, we are going to be dr uh, threading this. So you may want to use a driver, but go real slow because you could strip it out. So we're going to just line it right up with the corresponding holes. And let me get it in there. Of course, there it goes. So we're going to drive one hole in here, one screw in here. Let's get the other one started. Well, that carriage is right in the bad spot, isn't it? Let's get that out of the way. Give me just a second here. Let's lower that down. There. Now we lower that down. Now I should be able to drive this in just fine. You can tell I've already used these wing, these ears, but. I still need to do a bit of driving. Come on now. Man, that sounds horrible. <laughs> there. But once it's in, it really is secure. So give it a chance. Let it uh, screw in there. Screwing in the plastic is actually pretty decent because, it, again, it will hold the screws. There. So we've got our left bracket, track bracket in there. Um, it's nice and steady. We're going to jump over to the other side and we'll screw it in from that side. So I'm going to lean over my table here, but we've got, again, we've got our track bracket We've got the whole accessory holes here on the, on the outside of the carriage. We've got two, um, two of the long M5 screws here and our three millimeter hex driver. We're gonna line those up with our holes on the ear. We're just gonna drive that in. Let's get the other one started. Just 
keep going till it stops wiggling and has a nice tight connection. There. Jump back up and I'll tighten that top one down. There, so now our both track brackets are in place. We're ready to start attaching. So I'm gonna jump over to the other side so I can rest from leaning over that table. The next thing we're gonna take is our uh, left um, support, or support arm is what I'm calling them. We've got our T-plate, or our T-nut plate, and of course our thumb screw. I'm gonna pop that right through the support arm up here at the top. We're gonna take our T-nut plate and carefully from beneath, we're gonna slide it into our track. We're gonna take our screw, line it up with our screw, kind of pinch the two together, the uh, support arm and the T-nut. We're gonna pinch them right here on the track and we're gonna tighten our screw. Once it's tightened, we should be able to give it a nice loose connection or, a lo or loosen the screw up just a little bit, but not all the way and you should be able to slide it up and down at that point. We just tighten that down and we'll jump over to the other side and I'll zoom in so you can see a little better of what I'm doing. Okay, here we are, we're on the right side. I've zoomed in real close so you can get a really good idea of what I'm doing. So I'm taking my T-nut plate, I'm kind of sliding it back here and I'm using my finger to kind of hold it in place, hold it into the track. I've got my support arm here with my thumb screw through it and I'm gonna line up the screw with the nut plate and I'm gonna basically twist, make sure it catches and get my arm out of there. And now I should have my support arm all ready to go. So we've got our support arm, we've got our track brackets, we've got our ears on there. Now we're ready to install or slide in our, our, um, our boot. <laughs> Let me grab some, a uh, couple of uh, pins, just so you can kind of see a little extra tip here. Um, so these are our, our pin locks and our pin nuts. So essentially they just drop right in here. You can use it as is. You don't have to use the nut pins. Um, it's not going anywhere. Um, you know, I can force it pretty hard, but this boot is not going anywhere with those pins in place. It's very unlikely that you're going to vibrate enough for those pins to fall out entirely, so I wouldn't worry about it. But if you really want that extra security, you can take the pin nuts and just hold down the pin lock. Just kind of screw it in from beneath. Catch it, come on, there it goes. Oh. There it goes. And now that boot is definitely not going anywhere. Those lock, uh, locks are not going anywhere. You are ready to cut. Thank you for joining me um, with the installation of my bracketing system for the uh, Shipoko Carbide 3D HDZ carriage. Um, happy making. <laughs>